know that uh, in probability most important and useful uh, concept is conditional probability and uh, it will come throughout in probability in different different uh, form so once you understand conditional probability you can talk about various application of conditional probability and it is giving idea to compute probability in a very smart way and uh, that uh, logical way that means you go beyond the logic and trying to bring some interesting fact in order to compute the probability of an event so it is one kind of you can say that it is providing extra wing to compute probability of an event when i am giving a problem that to compute probability of an event so first uh, information happens to be definition of the probability measure and the given scenario regarding the event so that might be difficult in various cases but once you come up with conditioning approach that means you are putting yourself there you are putting yourself there you are trying to be part of that problem so in that problem you from your side you are coming with conditioning that means you are getting better observations and based on that you are trying to solve problem in a better way so it is robust technique what we call it so conditional probability again we will recall the definition it is same that means we are having a event a and uh, if you are willing to compute probability of a then you need to know all possible uh, outcomes that means you need to know sample of space in order to compute probability of a via probability measure axioms of probability measures or definition of probability measures so, so this one we call it prior probability prior probability that means first information probability now what is happening that uh, here in order to compute probability of a you need to know sample of space all possible outcome but someone is saying that uh, in order to compute probability of b a uh, b is given here that means one partial information is given here some information in or which will help to compute probability of a that would that would be given to you so that we call it partial information or conditioning information or conditioning statement that kind of thing so now our approach would be now from the scenario of b will compute probability of a so our new inverse would be b now we don't have to look into uh, sample space omega we don't have to worry about all possible outcomes you just have to focus on b from b how much a is happening how much a is happening from b so how much a is happening so that definition uh, in the last class also i had discussed a lot of uh, uh, example based on that so that means we are willing to compute probability of a from this scenario of b or condition condition on b we say that condition on b or scenario from the given scenario b so this one is a vertical bar a given b you can read it a given b and how we have computed this one it is actually how much a is happening within b what does it mean a probability of intersection b how much is a happening within b and our new inverse is b so we have to normalize this probability by the probability of happening of b because we don't have to look outside b we are computing the probability of b the probability of a from given b from the scenario of b that's why we need to normalize it in order to make a legitimate probability measure this conditional probability it is a legitimate probability measure and in the last class we had already seen that definition and then i discuss about two applications uh, in the last class and third one is bayes theorem first application was restating the definition of conditional probability as we are taking probability of b left hand side then this will give our idea to compute joint probability of a and b what does it mean joint occurrence of a and b means a intersection b probability of a so we are able to compute probability of a intersection b how we are we are taking probability of b towards conditional probability of a given b so here we have first observe b so here we are writing probability of b then after b we are observing a so what is that once we have already observed b after that we are observing a so that means observation e of a is based on uh, happening of b or observation of b so that's why we say here probability of b given a Pro observation of b is condition on a now observation of a condition on b so that's why we are 
encountering conditional probability of a given b so that that is the thing so, okay so here if you try to see in another way it is coming as a multiplication multiplication of two probability probability of the event which is observed first that here it happens to be b b is the given thing so b we have already observed after b we are observing a so we will compute probability of a given b so it is talking about multiplication of two probability and this multiplication is giving uh, probability of joint occurrence of a and b so this law we call it multiplication law if someone will say that no uh, why not we observe a first okay fine observe a first if you are observing a first then after a you will look to compute probability of b so you are going to observe b so that in that scenario you will have probability of a into conditional probability of b given a there you are observing a first then you are observing b so the approach is sequential completely so here uh, again someone is if you are saying that uh, if uh, you are observing a first it is not like that always you will observe uh, b first it would be completely based on your choice what is happening why at least if you are leaving the class you should inform don't like that in this ad hoc way you are leaving the class when they will come just uh, ask them they have to talk to me so if you are observing a first i am not saying it is uh, actually it is disturbing it is just disturbing the continuity of teaching probability of a if you are observing a first then you are observing b so probability of b given a will come okay so it depends upon your choices this this we call it multiplication rule in short i will call it mr multiplication rule now the second application we had discussed what was second application what was sec second application total probability so we are having sample of space and the sample of space we come up with various scenario uh, through that we got partition of the sample of space we are calling this scenario b1 b2 b3 so this scenario are mutually disjoint and totally exhaust in nature that means if you take any two scenario there would be no common outcome and if you talk about union of this scenario the union will give back our sample of space omega so that's why uh, these two are mutually disjoint and totally exhaust in nature apart from that uh, each bi happens to be a possible scenario that means probability of each bi is greater than 0 that means some, uh, each bi contains certain some outcomes so that it say so under this uh, sample of space one event is occurring that we call it a this event we call it a and now i am asking to compute the probability of a so how will compute the probability of a so probability the partition of this omega sample of space is bringing partition of the event a as well and we compute probability of a via total probability law so what do you say that what are the partition of a you will say that uh, this is the partition of a this partition we call it a intersection b1 this partition we call it a intersection b2 and this partition we call it a intersection bn so each partition of a happens to be no common things from others partition member so we can say that if you take any two partition member of a then both are mutually disjoint so if you talk about computation of probability of a how you will compute probability of a by summing the probability of these partition members so that means you are summing probability of a intersection b i i varies from 1 to n a intersection b i
let's see it, whether it work or not. A intersection BI. I think mouse here is this one is. I should have to use. A intersection BI. I varies from 1 to n. So this is the way to compute probability of A. So if I talk about uh, from uh, practical scenario like one patient visit hospital and having coughing and other different kind of uh, sign okay uh, symptoms the different different kind of symptoms so doctor what doctor will say after seeing various uh, symptoms doctor will say that you go for various medical test various medical test why doctor will suggest various medical test doctor will suggest that these are the possible scenario that may lead to a possible disease. So he will inquire from the patient, do you have drinking habit, do you have a smoking habit, do you uh, have eating uh, that uh, uh, package, packa package food. Okay and various other kind of things, so doctor will ask uh, something, various things the doctor will ask. What are those things, Wha what are those scenario? Those are the scenario or situation that may lead to a disease, a specific kind of disease. So suppose if you talk about, uh, uh, if you talk about milk, if you are buying packet milk, do you think preservative would be there or not? Do you think preservative would be there in the milk or not? Because there is a deadline that you have to use up to one month, two months, something like that. If you are uh, taking fish, that packet fish, again there would be preservative. Have you heard news recently that in uh, Chennai, uh, in Chennai there is one fish market actually packaging fish packaging there so that people were using a lot of preservative uh, that directly leads to cancer. So various situation may lead to uh, that those are the situation what are the situation that may lead to cancer. So the uh, doctor will suggest for those medical test test and if uh, patient is going from medical test then some conclusion will come that patient is having either cancer or not cancer, something like that. If patient is having cancer, then job is done for doctor, is it done or not? It is not done. The next, the doctor have to identify which cause may lead to cancer. And then what doctor will do? The doctor will try to neutralize that cause that may help that try to treat that cause that might have lead to cancer if uh, that patient is in good condition not in the bad condition then doctor will try to say that don't do a smoking don't do drinking don't take packaging milk or uh, packaging food or that kind of thing doctor will suggest and apart from that doctor will give some medicines so what is here so doc when you are going for medical test and you are coming with uh, some kind of cause, doctor is coming with some kind of uh, cause, age cause, such so a cause would be cause or conclusion. So, so it would be, you are computing actually total probability. What is the probability of having cancer? So that, that you are willing, you are computing total probability from the various scenario, eating habit, drinking habit, then taking uh, that uh, packaging food and various other things, your uh, daily activity and other kind of things, various things are there, okay. So those are the scenario what coming, okay. And then you are computing total probability. So total probability is having really very interesting application in medical field and various other kind of inferential problems, okay. From data you try to infer something, then there also uh, data is coming from which source you have to find it out. So you have to come up with probability, so you, you that you have to compute it 
uh, total probability. Uh, so two things we had already computed, uh, we have discussed multiplication rule and total probability. And total probability I had given another representation is like that here this uh, here you can further apply multiplication rule the first one. So it would be what? It would be in the form of summation i varies from 1 to n probability of b i because i you observe first that causes you observe first a is the effect sorry a is the effect not cause a is the effect or conclusion a is the effect or conclusion so here first you observe probability of causes many things a patient might have taken so there are various causes and and there is automatically one such there would be some kind of effect that effect we call it a so probability of uh, b i cause causes divide into probability of a given b i just we are applying multiplication rule ok then now this is the situation if uh, a patient has already gone through medical test various kind of medical test then there is a probability of having a cancer of particular disease that means you know the probability of A. What would be your next task? You have computed probability of A. What would be your next task? You have to find the probability of B i given A. That means the patient come to, come to know the doctor have already concluded that patient is having uh, cancer then doctor will try to compute the probability of a specific scenario given that patient is having a particular disease. So that means we need to compute probability of B i given A that given conclusion or effect this we have to compute and remember that probability of B i's would be given to you it would be there. Uh, from the data we can come up with probability of bi's. But we do not know what is the probability of bi's given A that we have to compute. So here probability of bi's are given here already scenario through partitioning approach. Probability of bi's are given. So how will compute probability of bi given A? That one is given by Bayes rule. That one is given by Bayes rule. Okay. And here probability of bi we call it prior probability. That means before in investigation of the disease or uh, before investigation of the probability of occurrence of a particular uh, event, okay. We know probability of BI. So this one is prior information. It is coming from data or something else, okay. Now once you have already computed probability of A, then you are computing probability of BI given A. This we call it posterior probability once cause is already detected, no, so, uh, effect is already detected or conclusion is already detected, we are computing posterior probability. So the relation between prior probability and posterior probability, it is given by Bayes rule and that is why we call it Bayesian inference. So here doctor always come up with some kind of prior information, then try to come up with posterior information, then you will get medicine. Then you will get medicine, that is the application of Bayes rule. So here I will talk Bayes rule in detail. So Bayes rule again I say that it is a restatement of conditional probability, definition of conditional probability. That will, so we know that probability of joint occurrence of A and B, it can be written as uh, probability of A into probability of B given A if you are observing A first. But someone is observing B first, then for that it will be probability of B into probability of A given B. Okay. So if you focus on these two, just what you will write? If I am saying that what is the probability of B given A? Here you will write probability of B intersection A divided by probability of A. But we know that probability of B intersection A, we can write it there uh, probability of B into probability of A given B. So that's way. So here what is happening here? This concept we call it prior probability. It is for two scenarios. Okay. We call it prior pro P R I O R prior probability. We call it prior probability. Okay, you can note down if you are willing to note down in the notebook. 
and this we call it posterior probability. Okay, this we call it posterior probability. So prior, once you have already observed prior probability, you have computer probability of A, then you are talking about posterior probability or updated probability also you can call it posterior probability. Okay. Now we are coming with partition of sample space, then what would be scenario? Just come up with partition of sample space. What would be scenario? Scenario suppose B1, B2, B up to Bn, these are the partitioning member of a sample space omega. Okay. We are having sample space. We have partition sample space into n number of partitioning member B1, B2. Uh, up to Bn, B1, B2, up to Bn. Okay, and there we observe an event A. Call it event A. Event. Okay, so what is happening that uh, probability of BI would be given to you from the question it would be given to you. So now what you have to compute you have to uh, you have to compute first probability of A, then you have to compute probability of BI is given A. So how will compute probability of BI is given A? As per definition of conditional probability you will say that probability of BI is uh, how much BI is happening A. How much scenario of BI is having in A, that cancer disease, how much a smoking habit is having in contribution in the cancer, or how much drinking is having contribution in the cancer. So that, that it is saying. So you are willing to compute that. So probability of BI intersection A divided by probability of A. So probability of A, you need to compute the probability of first. So how you are computing probability of A first? You are computing through to law of total probability. So this way. Probability of A intersection, this one is probability of A intersection B1, probability of A intersection B2, this one is probability of A intersection Bn. The, here you have already applied law of total probability in order to compute probability of A. That also you can call it conclusion, probability of conclusion or probability of evidence. Also you can call it evidence. It is your evidence that if you are going for medical test, there is evidence that that person is having a cancer. So that we call it evidence. And also you can apply there in uh, code drama as well, uh, not like only disease. So code drama as well. And this we call it what? This we call it probability of BI, that prior probability of BI. And this one is posterior probability of BI. So all name are given here. Probability of BI we call it prior probability of BI. That means we are coming from the prior scenario by asking, by developing questionnaire, by asking question from the patient. We com come up with probability of BI. Now, from the data, data we, based on experience, we come up with BIs. If we, uh, you know that from the data, you come up with probability of BI. Now, probability of A given BI is what? It is likelihood of occurrence of A under the scenario of B. So again, it is coming from data, data. So likelihood kind of thing. Probability of BI is coming from experience. Probability of A given BI, it is coming from data. So likelihood that scenario, someone might have already observed various past history of various patients. So based on that and uh, various causes that may lead to uh, some kind of disease. Okay. So this we call it, uh, com uh, it, it is coming from the uh, data source, what we call it. Then we are computing probability of BI given A, this we call it posterior probability. So the probability of A, you can call it here evidence. A probability, a total probability law that is, it is simple, I, I think it might be clear to everyone. Any question here till now? Any difficulty in understanding Bayes, Bayes rule? That means Bayes rule is all about computing this posterior probability. So how we are computing? We are computing through this way. We are computing through this. Okay. So for here uh, this term you can say that there are number of causes, n number of causes, B1, B2, B3 up to Bi. What are the causes here? Bi. BIs are the causes and there is a certain effect if you are go following very rough life 
definitely that may lead towards some kind of effect. Okay, some kind of effect. So, so that effect we call it A. Okay, so we observe the effect. Once we observe the effect, we wish to infer out which cause may lead to that effect. That means which posterior probability is higher? Which pro posterior probability is higher? Okay, so that, that we are willing to compute. So through example, uh, all these will uh, clear. So we are taking a medical diagnosis for a rare disease. So you are not feeling well and go to a doctor. The doctor fears you, uh, your symptoms may be consistent with a serious disease, say it's a cancer. Okay, symptoms, symptoms may lead towards, uh, doctor will suspect doctor is not sure, doctor will suspect. So in the patient, present case, medical statistics saw that that patient who, who have this disease test positive 95 percent. If someone is having cancer and will go for medical test, the positive, what is the probability of getting positive result? 95 percent. And 5 percent chance is that it will be not detected. It will be false negative. And, okay. So, while patient who do not have the disease test uh, positive 2 percent, what is this one? False positive. It is reading, giving positive result for ten cancer, but it is false. Every test is not 100 percent accurate. And, Every test is not, uh, medical test is not 100 percent accurate. So in the general population, one in thousand people in your age group has this disease, one in thousand. Probability of having that disease is given, one in thousand, one by thousand. So a week after the test, after the test, your doctor calls you back with the result and the test came, came back positive, test is positive. Given this information, so this is the partial information. Uh, what is the probability that you actually having the disease that you have to compute it? So you don't have to uh, worry about. You have to compute the probability that will see that it is not very large probability. If uh, all the scenario be considered, so let A be the event that the test come positive and B be the event that you have the disease. Okay, A is, you can call it P P for positive and uh, your disease, you can call uh, event B D, D for disease, something like that, for better suit. Okay. So our modeling assumptions say that 90 percent of patient with disease test positive. What does it mean? Pro probability of being positive given that having disease, what is that? 0.95. This is the information given. The second information is given that 2 percent of patient without the disease test positive. That means without the disease means B complement. B is having disease, B complement is having no disease, having no disease. Okay. So probability of A given, A is, the, uh, is what? Pro being tested positive. Probability of A given B complement is 0 0.02. 2 percent means 0 0.02. Now third in information is 1 in 1000 have the disease. That probability of B is given. What is that? Probability of one in thousand, but point zero zero one, it is given. What you have to compute desired probability? You have to compute posterior probability of B, given A. If test the patient is tested positive, what is the probability that patient is having disease? That that is probability of B given A. So probability of B given A, how you will compute? So you will compute it by Bayes rule. It is coming from the definition of conditional probability, but here this is the Bayes rule. Probab prior probability of B into uh, pro likelihood of A under the scenario of B divided by evidence of A, evidence of tested positive. What is the evidence? Probability of A. That, so there would be two scenarios, having disease, having not disease. So that is way the, here in this case the sample of space is divided into B and B complement. Okay? And A is what? Here this test positive. This is the sample space. You have to, what is the probability of A? How you will compute? Probability of A intersection B plus probability of A intersection B complement. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So this is A, uh, probability of A. So you have, so how you are computing probability of A? By law of total probability. So in the denominator probability of A is coming. So this, uh, this one is uh, 
probability of A intersection B, or this one is probability of A intersection B complement. So that you can easily follow it. And here prior probability of B times probability of A given B. So all information are given here. And simplify this computation. The probability is coming here. How much? Despite of that, the patient is tested positive. What is the prob probability? 4.5. That means 5%. So, should that patient have to worry about? Not. Despite that uh, patient got tested positive, that uh, what is the probability of uh, having disease is 4.5%. Uh, why? Why it is that? Because the pro prior probability is very small. We have taken prior probability is very small. If you go in villages, cancer is very rare unless there is some water problem, something like that. So, it would be very near. In city, things are complicated. Those who are taking fresh food, uh, chances of such disease would be very less. So another example I am taking it, a drug test. A drug test has 1% false positive. That is 1% of those not taking disease having positive in test. That is the meaning of false positive. And 5% false negative. What does it mean? 5% of those taking drugs getting negative. Okay. So suppose that 2% of uh, those te tested are uh, taking drugs compared to the probability that uh, somebody who tests positive is actually taking drugs. Again, conditional probability is coming. So you have to set up all those uh, things in a right way. So what uh, you introduce your event t equal to p, you call it t equal to p, that means test positive. t equal to n means test negative. T equal to D equal to P means person takes drug. Person take drug. D equal to N, you can person doesn't take drugs. So all just a way of denoting events, associated events. So here all scenario are given. False positive means test positive given that person doesn't take drug. That means uh, probability of T equal to P given that T equal to D equal to N. So this conditional probability you have computed. This one is false negative is also a conditional probability. It is given here. Then uh, probability of uh, D equal to P is also given. So you know the complement of that. Complement of D equal to P is what? D equal to N. You can compute 1 minus uh, 0 0.02. That means 0.98. You have computed all. So what is the desired probability? that you have to compute a desired probability you can see that uh, compute the for somebody who test positive is actually taking drug test positive test positive is given scenario what is the probability is that uh, that person is taking drug that's a probability of uh, d equal to p given that t equal to p so just you have to apply here base rule prior probability of d equal to p times likelihood of t equal to p given that d equal to p divided by total probability of t equal to p so you have to compute in two scenario okay uh, d equal to n and d equal to p the, so n and p both are complement to each other so actually notation confusion if you are facing notation confusion in simple a and b you can put in a and b if you are so you are free to go for your notation convention third example i am taking it oral example so in an oral example you have to solve exactly one problem which might be any of three types, A, B, or C, which come with uh, probability 30%. What is the probability of A? 30% uh, probability of B is 20%. Probability of C is 50%. Okay. So three types of questions are there. During your preparation, you have solved nine of, out of 10 problem of type A, two out of 10 problem of type B, six out of 10 problem of type C. Then you, here you have to compute two things. Compute the probability that you will solve the problem of the exam. This we call it total probability. Then second you have to see uh, uh, solve uh, this conditional probability, the posture probability. That given that you have solved the problem, compute that the uh, the uh, problem was of type A. Probability of uh, you, if you call it uh, give some name, the probability of what is the probability of A given that thing, that event. So uh, if you uh, solve first first it is what is the probability of solve so here you have to solve here scenario see it here the co all question are divided into three category a b 
and C. Property of A is given, property of B is given, property of C is given. So all these are given to you. That one is the prior scenario. So property of solve, solve is what? Here it is coming. You have to attempt for all types of questions. So property of solve, it include uh, problem from uh, all segment. So property of solve is property of A, uh, solve intersection A, or property of A intersection solve, plus property of A intersection, so B intersection solve, plus property of C intersection solve. So here you are applying, uh, here just uh, atomic level you are applying here, multiplication rule, and here also you are applying multiplication rule, here also uh, mul multiplying multiplication rule. In total you are applying total property law. And through that you have computed uh, property of solve is 0.61. You have, now next you have already solved the problem. What is the property that it is of type A? That property of A given solve. So how you will apply, how you will compute it? So here when you are putting property of A intersection solve, that would be uh, divided by property of solve. That would be conditional probability. But when you convert into multiplication rule uh, under the order of occurrence, it becomes base rule. It becomes base rule. So property of A, it is given to you, prior property. So that's why we are property of A given solve, we are writing property of A into property of solve given A divided by property of solve. Property of solve we have computed, this one is given to us, this one is also given from this question. Okay, just substitute all these. So you will get the desired property. This is the desired property. What is the property? 44.2 percent that it is type A problem what you have attempted just you have attempted one question so that so again here Bayes rule is coming so Bayes rule is very interesting now uh, all we have discussed about Bayes rule and if you are looking for uh, more problems you can follow my books there are a lot of problems you will get it okay and all are solved problem it is not like that you don't have to worry about solution so solve just uh, I have given a, that so that you can do practice and understand the approach, understand the approach, okay. So now, the module one is finished, till now any question? Anyone is having any question? No. So, uh, we are starting uh, module two, and we will talk about random variables. So, in the module one, we have computed probability from the event perspective. So, events are very general in nature, it may be set of numbers, it may be set, it may be set of objects and something like that. So that kind of scenario we have observed. Now we are trying to make it more mathematical. That the probability modeling we try to make it more mathematical. So how will make it more mathematical? When you talk about mathematics, so generally we deal with numbers. Numbers, a computation of numbers, algebra of numbers. So everything we will try to, randomness we will shift into number, numeric, uh, uh, random numbers, random events were there, now that those will map to random numbers. We will talk about random number. What is meaning of random numbers? If I say that one is a random number, what is meaning? There is a probability associated with one and there would be probability of occurrence of one. Either it would be 0.1 or 0 0.2, 0 0.3 like that. If I am simply saying num we are having number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 like that. So these are certain numbers. These are having probability how, how much? 1. But I am saying that no. I am saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are run, random numbers. That means each number is having a probability of occurrence. So probability, so all these are random in nature. Those are not occurring uh, certain, with certainty. Those are occurring with uncertainty. I am saying that like your grade is uh, right now, it is a random number. That uh, grade grade or CGP if you call it uh, what uh, what is the maximum score you will get uh, in a course maximum CGP you will get it is if you talk in num numeric way maximum is 10 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 I, th I think 4 is failure I think I think. have to check for that uh, 4, 3, is, uh, 4, up to 4, 0. Okay, so, so all these are having probability. All these are having, right now you are not saying that with probability 1 you will get 10. If you are working very hard in the right way, then you will get 10. So that's why here we will talk about random number. So here we are talking about sample space. So we will leave the sample space here in random variable and we have to define a map 
we have defined a function from sample space to real numbers or we call it omega x it is a subset of real number it is subset of real number codomain means uh, here codomain is r simply i would like to say that loosely if you are saying that we are defining a map from uh, sample space to r r is a set of real number so what does it mean that means we are mapping outcomes to random numbers numbers so here uh, outcome the uh, randomness of outcome is shifted to numbers so that's why we call it random number so here uh, random variable is a map from omega to r and that is that it is behaving like a function but it is giving random numbers so uh, systematically we can say that mathematically a random variable happens to be a map from omega to r acting as a function that assign a real number real number x of omega to each outcome of omega do you know what is meaning of a function if you are defining a function how many property function has to satisfy if i am defining a function from a to b from a set a to b tell me what is the definition of function definitely in high school you might have seen the definition of function those who are from hindi medium hindi name is phalan you might have already heard so tell me how what is the definition of function all the element any other what what uh, he are saying unique output okay and unique output to whom of whom expression you are 50% right 50% unable any any other any other Uh, yeah it is a relation function is a relation that relation between a to b and any other what condition is it is a statement you don't be very much uh, uh, what arbitrary nature yeah function is simply it is a map or rule which assign a unique element to every element of domain it is a function is a rule from set a to b so that it assign a unique element in b for every element in a for every element in a so there are two properties first in unique element in b and second one is every element in a so there are two condition here in uniqueness is coming in b and everyness is coming in a so you you should focus on definitely it is a rule that rule follow uniqueness and everyness what is meaning of uniqueness a single element of a can't have two image in b can't have two unique image a single element in a will have unique element in unique image in b that we call it uniqueness and what is everyness every element of a must be engaged under the rule f that means there would be no left out element in a under the rule of f if there is a left out element of left out element of in a what does it mean it will not define a function so everyness and uniqueness both are very much important that you have to focus so where is everyness and where is uniqueness you have to identify and definitely f is a rule or map whatever you call it so you have to talk about everyness and uniqueness so f is a rule which satisfy these two property everyness and uniqueness and i think it would be clear to everyone is it clear to everyone 
book will not uh, explain all these things in detail. I, I know how they are dealing with. So you have to understand it. So here I am saying random variable x is a function. So that means every element of omega that we denote it by a small omega, every element should be engaged to a unique random number in R, unique number. Every so here every omega small omega is the small a small omega is the one element of this one everyness it is mapped to a unique number in r so this one is this omega a small omega is coming from where it is coming from the sample space capital omega and this one is coming from where is this one this one in the codomain R. It is a real number. This one is what we call it here under this map. Omega we call it outcome. We are calling it outcome. What kind of outcome? It is a random outcome. Random is by default hidden there. So it is a random outcome. We are not certain that uh, out, what outcome will come. So it is a random outcome. So outcome random is already you can mention it here random outcome. It is outcome of the random experiment. Okay. What is this one? It is a number. What is this? X of omega. It is a number, or you can call it uh, the adjective random is already hidden here. Otherwise, you can call it, you can mention it here random number. Random number. It is a numeric. So, random variable is a quantification, quantification technique of. Uh, random outcome random we are mapping random outcome to random number f here capital x is a function so if i am saying that is there any randomness in x no function is always deterministic in nature there is no randomness where is the randomness in omega outcome in outcome randomness is there if you are tossing a coin can you say that head will come or tail will come? It is totally random in nature. If you are throwing a dice, face will come or face 1 will come or 2 will come or 3 will come. Okay. Those are random in nature. So, those outcomes are random in nature. And x is a function. So, x is always deterministic. There is no randomness in x. Actually, x of omega becomes random. Why? Because omega is random. Omega is random. So, here you have to. So, here random number put here. random number here you can call it random outcome random random outcome okay so here uh, we say that x is a map from omega to r and omega x we call it range of x. One example we have taken. So x say that it is number of heads in three coin tosses. If you are tossing three coin and they are counting number of heads, how many possible value x will take? How many possible value x will take? If you are tossing three coins, and you are counting number of head, how many value x will take? x is number of heads, either 0, 1, 2 or 3. Okay. So, this x number of heads, it is defining a rule, it is a defining a function from omega as a sample of space of tossing 3 coins to real number. Okay. So, if I ask here, um, what is omega if you are tossing 3 coins? What, what is omega here? You will get tail, 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 that means 0 head. Then you will get tail, tail, head. Then you will get tail, head 
and tail then you will get head tail and tail then you will get tail head and head then you will get head tail and head then you will get head head and tail then you will get head head and head so how many outcome you observe you are tossing three coin eight outcomes can you count all these are eight or not all these are eight 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so so we are are having eight outcomes when you are tossing three coins I am saying that x x is is counting number of heads. X is what? number of of what we are, number we generally uh, we denote it by hash number of heads hash is the shortcut of denoting number numbers of heads number of count that has is denoting numbers of heads so under this map x where t will map to where t will map to zero how many head you observe in this outcome zero head now how many head you observe in this t t second outcome one so t t h will map to one T H T will map to one. Then H T T will map to one. So all these three outcome map to one. Then T H H will map to two. H T H will map to two. H H T will map to two. Then triple H will map to three. You are just counting number of heads. so what you observe that this random outcome of the sample space in this experiment has been mapped to random numbers in r these are the number in right hand side you observe number so x is a random variable okay now if that is the scenario so you are interested to compute probability of occurrence of these random numbers what is the probability of zero i will compute probability of zero what is the probability of that x is equal to zero what what is that here it is not a kvc game that hit and trial kind of thing you have to compute it look in back the corresponding outcome if you are saying x equal to zero that mean number of heads is zero that means this uh, this event it is equivalent to what computing probability that x equal to 0 is what it is pre image of sorry it is image of ttt so that means we are computing probability of ttt tossing a coin three times here and you are getting a head so what is the probability of ttt it is 1 by 8 so here zero is not occurring with probability 1 it is occurring with probability 1 by 8 if i am asking what is the probability of x equal to 1 what is the probability of x equal to 1 so if you talking talking about x equal to 1 it is equivalent to say that we are computing probability of a an event in the sample of space x equal to 1 is equivalent to an event this 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 three this three outcome in the sample space okay so that means uh, you call it here you call it set a1 so you will compute probability of a1 what is the probability of a1 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 how many times three times so it is getting 3 by 
if i am asking to compute probability of the random number x equal to 2 that means x equal to it is equivalent to say that these these are the outcome this what are the pre image of x equal to 2 so you have to call it a2 call this a2 probability of x equal to 2 is equal to probability of a2 a2 you are calling it a2 so this you will call it probability of a2 how many outcome you observe in a2 three outcome each outcome is having probability 1 by 8 so the probability of a2 sorry probability of a2 it would be what 3 by 8 so you can you might have already seen the situation of random number why i am calling uh, the element in the range of x random number because these are associated with probability these are not certain things okay uh, what is the probability of x equal to 3 easily you can compute probability of x equal to 3 that means you have to look back the pre image of 3 what is that probability of h h h i am saying i am not asking final answer first you have to look through outcome that one is the link you have to see that because that you have finished it here easily you will get answer here this question is very simple but when you will see question in later those will be difficult if you don't understand uh, outcome and random numbers you will face problem to compute the probability that's why people are saying that it is a one of the toughest course and why toughest course because you are not giving attention to what better understanding of the course okay not never focus on the final answer S see the uh, understanding how it is coming okay so we have discussed uh, what is the random variable it might be clear to everyone I, I will make it more mathematical everyone have noted down this if you are willing to note down you can note down because I am going to erase all this just note down your notebook then I will erase and I will come up with uh, more mathematical definition okay not a have you noted down? Note down your notebook. Here there is no white or black board. So this consider board currently. Okay. I am going to erase it. In the video it would be there, but in the PPT it will be erased. Okay, so here I have already given here that uh, uh, SSS is mapped to 3, HHT is mapped to 2, HTH mapped to 2, TH, uh, THH is mapped to 2, HTT mapped to 1, THT mapped to 1, TTH mapped to 1, TTT mapped to 0. So this mapping is already given in short. So take another example, a player plays the following game, a coin is tossed 3 times and the number of heads is counted. A coin is tossed three times and number of head is counted. Now, this one is just the first question. It is similar. I am making it more difficult. The number, the player received dollar one if x equal to two and dollar eight if x equal to three. But and nothing other, nothing otherwise. If x equal to something other than two and three, he will that uh, player will not receive anything. So I, am, I made another random variable. So that random variable we call it reward kind of random variable. X is number of heads and second random variable that you are getting reward that we denoted by Y. So what are the possible value of Y? 
what are the possible value of y y will observe either 0 1 or 8 when you are getting when you are getting reward 1 when x equal to 2 number of head is 2 when you are getting reward 8 when number of head is 3 when you are getting reward 0 when number of uh, head is other than 1 or 3 so that kind of thing that way so here it is just function of fun, function of function composition function composition so here uh, these are the possible value of x and these are the possible value of y so if i ask what is the domain of x sample of space omega what is the domain of y also it is sample of space of random experiment <laughs> omega it is also so it is one kind of composition is coming so x is a map from x is a map from omega to r and here we will write it omega x omega x is what range of x that means what are the images collection of images omega s is the range and uh, what is y y is map from omega x to omega y so omega x to omega y so in short if you talk about it is a composition mapping function of function omega x to omega y so you can look back here omega x to omega y so if i simply ask what is omega actually it is uh, omega it is one kind of composition kind of thing simply uh, compose it is composed with uh, uh, here you are writing it like this way mm. you write it here uh, take one a small uh, specification of y a small y so what is a small y a small y is you are writing it as a small y of x a small x ok a small x it is image of x that we are saying that y is a function of image of x uh, what is a small x x is a small x is image of omega a small so you will write further here a small y is image of omega and outcome omega under the map x so you might have already seen that how the actual domain of y is what you can pull back to omega it is a pull pulls back so y is actually in short actually it does not look right but loosely you can say that y is a one kind of if you are saying that uh, oh, oh, y under the image of sorry recall the composition mapping if i say why this y is capital when i put a curl kind of things then it would be a small what is a capital y of omega it is coming as y this one is composition operation with x over omega so it is composition one kind of composition mapping so why pulls back to are you getting meaning of pulls back or not pulls back to domain omega sample space of the random experiment so that's where here uh, you can see the in this uh, summary chart you can see all those so this one is random variable and uh, few more random variable i will talk about like if you are taking an interval from minus 1 to 1 and you are playing a game that choosing a point number from the interval choosing a number and defining a sign defining a sign ok so you are taking a number you are taking a number what is the output it is a what is the outcome you are selecting a random number from the interval minus 1 to 1 ok and uh, you are assigning a sign here assigning a sign 
So, all the numbers from minus 1 to 1, where it will map to? How, how many type of sign those number will have? How many possible signs are there? It is either negative or positive or 0, if you are taking 0. So, 3. So, negative call it minus 1, positive call it 1 and 0 is 0. So, here if you are picking any number at random from the interval minus 1 to 1, then when omega is less than 0, it will map to minus 1. When omega is 0, it is mapped to 0. When omega is greater than 1, it will map to 1. You have given name to those, numeric, numeric to those, sign, sign, numeric to sign. Plus means 1, minus means minus 1, 0 means 0. Okay. So, again it is a random variable. It is defining a random variable. What is the sample of space? Minus 1 to 1. And what is the range of sample of space, uh, this uh, random variable? Minus 1, 0, 1. So, it is a legitimate random variable. Actually, here in the last case, we had taken a sample of space. That one was a discrete set, discrete and finite set. Finite eight number of outcomes were there. In this case, how many outcome there in the sample of space? Sample of space is an interval, infinitely many. It is an uncountable set. It is some continuous kind of set. It is a continuous set. So, if you are defining a random variable, then sample of space may be a discrete set, may be a continuous set. It is not like that there any fixed criteria. You can consider with anyone. The nature of random variable, it will be defined by range of the range of the random variable. So, here range of the random variable here, it is very much. So, when you say that x is a map from sample of space omega to omega x, real number, that omega x is the range of x under uh, when you are defining this map, range of x. So, the nature of a random variable, it will depends upon omega x. If omega x is a discrete set, then corresponding random variable, we will call it a discrete random variable. And if omega x is a continuous set, then corresponding random variable, we will call it a continuous random variable. That means, we are talking about classification of random variable. So, this one is example here, what is, whatever example till now we have taken, all are example of discrete random variable. Why? The omega x is a discrete set. Here you are defining a, a, a another random variable, uh, this we call it characteristic random variable. Okay, chi kind of notation you can come up with, characteristic. That means if you are taking a set, it is something very general kind of set we are taking it. And uh, what is the characteristic function? It says that if you are taking an element from the set that will map to 1, if you are taking a, an outcome from out of the set that will map to 0. So, here omega is very general arbitrary kind of nature, omega can be anything, omega can, can be. So, this one is characteristic map, we call it characteristic map. So, this one is also again defining a random variable. So, always you, if you nothing, no out event is mentioned there, always you, you can come up with a uh, random variable. No specific thing mentioned there, you can always come up with that. So, uh, here uh, actually notation is chi, this we read it chi chi of any set. This one is chi of omega. Chi of omega is also a random variable. If you are defining chi of omega, that one is also a random variable. So, now we will talk about discrete random variable. And in next class in detail we will cover all these. So, what is discrete random variable? So, as I had told that, so if you are taking a uh, random variable x as a map from omega to omega x or where omega x is a countable set omega x is a countable set or a discrete set. What does it mean? That means we are able to write omega x as a sequence of random numbers. Here a small x i are talking, we, random number we do not do. So, omega x is actually a sequence of random number. We are writing it as x k, k varies from 1 to infinity something like that, natural number, k is natural number simply I call it, k is natural number, k belongs to set of natural number n, we call it. So, here omega is, then we will say that the corresponding uh, random variable is a discrete random variable. Also, we put a condition that if you take any subset in omega x, any subset in omega x, omega x, 
that will push back to an event in omega. Apart from this definition, it is a map from omega to omega x. If you are taking b is any subset in omega x, it is a subset, any a specific kind of subset that we call it Borel set actually generally. So, it is a subset of omega x. If you are taking any subset b from omega x and this x in you are reading it, it is reading it inverse image. This is have you seen inverse of a set? Have you seen like that? That means if you are defining inverse function, whether that inverse function is taking argument uh, as a set? No. Entries are coming. Argument is, uh, it is one kind of function in inverse map, it is coming like that. A function approach, what you are, everyness and uniqueness. But this one is not a function. X inverse, what I have written, I am saying that it, it is inverse image. So, the last example, if you go, actually it will not allow to go back. Okay. So, last example, what I had told that, that uh, tail, 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 then tail, tail, head, then tail, head, tail, then head, tail, tail, then tail, head, head, then tail, then tail okay head tail head then head head tail head head tail i'm just giving picture of uh, inverse image then head 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 okay and we had already seen that it is make it head we have already seen that under the scenario number of heads we are defining number of heads x call number of number of heads has number of heads, number of h, capital H, I am writing it, number of heads, you can just uh, recall it from there. So, we know that this one is mapped to 0, these 3 map to 1, these 3 map to 1 and then these 3 map to 2. Okay, and this one is mapped to three. So, what we say that what is the inverse image of zero? What is meaning of inverse image of zero? Means what are the elements which are mapped to 0 that we uh, represent it by x inverse of x inverse of 0 it is collection of outcome which map to 0 we call it inverse image of 0 what is this one it is a set what is this one it is just a singleton set containing t t t only t t t is mapped to 0 and I am not going to definition kind of thing, just I am making to visualize what is inverse image. So, inverse image of 0 is, it is not an inverse function, it is a set in the domain, subset in the domain. What is the inverse image of 1? That means we have to look all those outcomes which are mapped to 1. 
so inverse image of 1 so what is inverse image of 1 what are the element which are mapped to 1 there are 3 so it is what I had called it I had called it a1 you can call it inverse image of 1 is, is what a1 you can call it a1 this one is a1 it is a subset of domain okay <coughs> what is inverse image of 2 remember that inverse image is not a map not a function it is a subset in domain or oh, sorry what I am writing here inverse image of 2 what is that it is this this out outcome a2 what we had given name to this a2 you can call it a2 what is in inverse image of uh, 3 what is inverse image of 3 what is inverse image of 3 it is head 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 the set containing outcome head head and head so what we observe that if i am saying that inverse image if you are defining a, uh, a random variable and you are looking for inverse image of the random numbers what are those inverse image of random number what are those those are event in sample space what what are these these are event in sample space what is this one is event one event what is event how it is characterized by no head a2 is event characterized by one head a2 is event characterized by zero head it is satisfying a statement zero head now two head then hss it is an event it is a subset of sample space characterize that it is having three head there is a statement three head okay so what is happening that random numbers if you take random numbers as a subset subset of random number those pulls back to events so uh, if you are talking about discrete random number what is that it is a map from omega to omega x such that if you take any subset from subset of random number which pulls back to an event in omega event you know are you getting me little bit uh, difficult this one but you have to understand this if you are taking any random numbers uh, collection of random numbers some collection of random numbers it pulls back to some event in omega some event in omega i am not saying that some outcome in omega why event because it is associated with one a statement some kind of a statement there must be so here the outcomes what you are taking here so pulls back it is pulls back so inverse image is what we call it and it satisfies the following property that uh, it satisfies that inverse image of a random number x a small x is a random number it is talking about it is equivalent to say that it is a uh, collection of uh, it is equivalent to say that all collection of all outcome which is mapped to random number x which is mapped to random number x that you have seen so loosely this uh, inverse image of a small x you can denote it by x is equal observing value a small x x is observing a random number a small x so that you can loosely uh, uh, and this one is defining an event in omega it is defining an event in omega so all this uh, i have discussed and here the second condition is that omega x must be a countable set if you are defining a discrete random variable omega must be a countable set uh, that means at most countable you can call it uh, it is a discrete set simply it is a discrete set and third one is if you are taking an set b in r or omega x it would be written in term of random numbers it would be written in term actually uh, a and c both are similar both are similar a and c again i have written, written it like that so other thing we will discuss in next class in detail regarding we will start with random numbers 
ఐ విల్ గో ఫర్ అటెండెన్స్ థ్యాంక్ యూ